We now head on towards the keynote sessions to be delivered by an eclectic line of leaders and for the very first keynote for today by Prophase on application security posture management for fintech, we'd like to extend a very warm welcome to Lakshmi Das, co-founder and product evangelist at Prophase. Please welcome her with a huge round of applause. Lakshmi, the stage is all yours. So very good afternoon to FinSec 2023. So how are you guys feeling? Yeah, good. So it really, you know, it's like a dream come true to be addressing the audience of the dream city of India. So I'm really uh, happy and delighted. And this kind of gives me and reminds me of, uh, you know, the ASS event that happened in Delhi, where this beautiful lady was anchoring for us. And uh, we won the Innovation Challenge Box Award at the AS 2022. So indeed, um, I'm really privileged. And thanks to the organizers, DSCI and NCOE for supporting us. OK, so let me get started. So I hope all of you are you know, erected with your postures, because we are going to discuss application security posture management for FinTech. Because we are all into the FinTech space, I think this would be a right thing to do justice to the industry that we are interacting out here. So we all know that you know, security is sector agnostic, and all, you know, all the, sector, all the you know, domains require security. But FinTech is somewhere where we have a lot of sensitive data and a huge amount of data. So even a minor breach you know, could do a massive damage to the organization which is involved. So that is why the, you know, the global FinTech market is expected to grow at a rate, range of 27%. And it is expected to hit a revenue of 30, 30, uh, 32 billion. So which is where, you know, because of this huge revenue, and a huge amount of sensitive data involved, this becomes a praying ground for all the hackers and intruders. Because we all know, wherever there is a huge amount of data and sensitive deal, you know, this is a best target audience for all the hackers. And what really happens as an impact of any kind of cyber attack on a fintech organization, obviously it results in the financial loss, data theft, identity theft, and these, I know all the KYC details are there you know, with all the fintech organizations. So if this is de leaked into the dark web, you know, it could be used to launch any kind of phishing attacks and other kind of cyber crimes as well. And the major part is something that we cannot buy back with money is the reputation loss of your organization because that is your hard earned thing and this cannot be bought back with any amount of money. And another thing is whichever state or country that you're involved in, in the global aspects, we have regulations like GDPR, PCI, DSS, HIPAA, and all of that. So all of these regulatory or monetary losses of, uh, you know, even fines could be levied on your organization if you kind of fall under a cyber attack. So let me just take you, uh, you know, what are the kind of challenges faced by the fintech security in terms of fintech organization? So first and foremost, we can talk about uh, identity management. So there's a lot of uh, data being involved, the KYCs, you know, the financial data, and all of that. So there should be somebody who is actually owning it, you know, governing, uh, you know, the data flow and all of that, because this is a part of the regulatory compliances. And another thing is data security, because even uh, even if, if there are vulnerabilities in your application, then this can pose a major risk, you know, to your application. So. Th Thereby, it can lead to data security breaches. And this is where it has to be addressed effectively. Another thing is the regulatory compliances of your state or your country, where uh, you know, all these kind of legal information, I mean, the financial information, should be handled, uh, you know, stored and transited only in a very uh, confidential manner so that it doesn't fall into the hands of the misuse, I mean, bad actors. So let me, I'm sure. Um, Many of you might be aware about cloud security poster management. In fact, there are many uh, poster management, be it cloud security, device security, uh, data access, or identity, sec identity security. All of these things are there. But predominantly, you know, since we, we, I mean, we have a lot to do with the cloud, and most of the applications are now residing on the cloud. So people are more aware about cloud security poster management. So how many of you here you know, are aware about ASPM or CSPM and all of that? Can I just show a raise of hands? OK, great. So um, 
Another thing is that in the cloud security posture management, uh, it's ba it basically deals about you know, your applications being on the cloud. But one thing is that it kind of falls into the responsibility of the cloud ser service providers. So there is a, you know, a, a little relaxation on that part because uh, you know, the, there's a huge deal you know, taken out or uh, in, you know, responsibility taken by the cloud service providers wherever you are in. But when it comes to application security, you know, it becomes a shared responsibility because, uh, because that is a bottleneck, you know, when you're talking about application security because it becomes the, uh, you know, the vendor's responsibility to take care of, you know, the security of the applications, even if it is deployed on any of the clouds and you say that it is secure. So this is where, you know, the importance of application security poster management is actually coming into picture, which is a continuous monitoring methodology wherein uh, the risk and you know, the vulnerabilities are identified through uh, vulnerability scanning, and it is found out earlier in the development life cycle so that you know, the vulnerabilities can be prioritized, the risk prioritization can be done, and the remediations can be taken up accordingly. So this reduces the minimum, I mean, impact on the application security issues, and thus close all the vulnerabilities earlier in the development life cycle. So this is uh, one of the you know, most advanced form of as, uh, application security management. So as I talked about uh, cloud security, posture management, and ASPM, let's just go through how these things are different and all related. So first and foremost, application security, we all know, deals with the application security on the cloud. And obviously, um, CSPM deals with all looking into the cloud infrastructure, you know, what kind of risk can be there in the cloud infrastructure, and all of that. Now coming to the objectives of ASPM, the major thing is to identify the vulnerabilities in your application earlier in the development life cycle. And uh, whereas uh, the uh, cloud security posture management, it deals with the cloud infrastructure and all, you know, all the major assets that are on the cloud. The key features of ASPM would be to do scanning and to do dependency analysis of, you know, between the applications and to mitigate these kind of vulnerabilities effectively. And uh, in the CSPM, it also looks into the identity, I mean, risk identification, and also to uh, be a part of compliance monitoring as well. And another thing is the benefits that we have associated with ASPM and CSPM. So basically, what happens if you identify vulnerabilities earlier in the life cycle? So that means that you can remediate or take the effective actions very early so that you know, um, you don't face any security breach, you know, later on. So this kind of saves a lot of effort and uh, money so that it, you need not spend these things after an attack has happened. So these, another thing about CSPM is, it's, again, it's benefits, which involves risk mitigation and, you know, the various compliance policy enforcements. So these are the main things about ASPM and CSPM. So I hope that it's kind of clear, you know, how um, ASP, ASP, ASPM becomes an um, uh, individual responsibility, and uh, CSPM is more like a cloud uh, vendor's responsibility. Now let's just go through the benefits of ASPM. So I hope uh, I am not, I, I don't know, I always get a slot just before lunchtime, so I hope I'm not, please excuse me for taking uh, you know, that time between your food. So, um, because I'm the look kind of I'm getting, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, so let's talk about the benefits about uh, ASPM. So basically, uh, you know, it kind of looks into the assets of your organization, mainly the application assets, so that, uh, you know, it has a clear idea about the asset inventory. And uh, also it looks into the dependencies between the applications so that you know, it, has a, it kind of creates a good idea about how the data flow happens between the applications, whether the applications are on-premise or on cloud, so that you know, all the vulnerabilities can be uh, assessed based on the, even the criticalities of each of these applications. So how important they are uh, in, your, in your organizational level and its usage. So this is looked upon and all the priorities and the classification is done based on that. So it's not just a one-time activity. So it's a continuous monitoring process. You can say it's a never-ending monitoring process it's because the threat landscape is evolving at such a fast pace that you cannot just stop 
you know, just do a one-time check and you stop there, you know, with security. So this is, this does not work in the security industry. Another thing is incident response and recovery. So basically in ASPM, there is a lot of training and awareness created even from the coding level. So the, uh, you know, secure coding practices, deployment practices, all of them are coming into picture so that uh, even, uh, you know, the security starts from the coding level. Now let me just get into what are the key capabilities for an ASPM. So basically it offers application inventory, as I said. So it will have a generic idea of all the applications, be it on-premise or on cloud. And also it will have the idea about the data dependency between the applications. Another thing is AppSec testing. So it's not just about identifying uh, you know, the vulnerabilities, but you have to follow a lot of testing procedures so that you can ensure that your applications are safe, which involves SAST, uh, static application testing, or DST, dynamic application testing, vulnerability scanning, and all of these things. Another thing is the dependency analysis between the applications, which I already talked about. So these are the key capabilities of application security posture management. And the best practices that you have to follow is obviously you have to train your entire team on secure coding practices, deployment practices, and also keep on reviewing your policies and keep updating them at least once annually. What happens in most of the organizations is that security policies might be implemented and then you never look back. But the threat actors are too smart. You know, you can never predict what kind of threats come, what time, when, and from where. So this is the issue that you have to keep updating your policies every now and then so that you are also on top of your security. Another thing is to have a strong incident plan implemented so that if there is a security incident happening, who are you supposed to report it to, what all stakeholders you have to send out the reports to, all of that has to be planned out and in a very you know, coordinated fashion. And also you have to keep updating and patching your vulnerabilities so that you, are, you remain risk free. So now all is said, so we do not preach and then, you know, we don't say, uh, we don't, uh, we not, we, we are actually effective into the picture. Just when you talk about the case study we just recently faced last April. So there was a massive DDoS attack against the critical infrastructure of our country, which involved the airports, five major airports of our country, and also the next day was the hospital sector. So this is where, you know, uh, our web application firewall could beat even the Gartner listed products where they remained helpless and they could not, you know, help the organization in mitigating these attacks. This is majorly and primarily because of the architecture which is updated. Because even if you want to do a slight change in an age-old, you know, architecture, that becomes a major, major activity and it takes a lot of time. So if it is, uh, you know, most innovative or, you know, most um, advanced kind of architecture like a Kubernetes architecture, it is a containerized platform wherein any kind of scalability is possible so that you get sufficient time to analyze the traffic that's actually coming in and go into the mitigation process. So this was a major attack which is involving layer three to seven DDoS attack and uh, all the API calls were sent to you know, for the critical infrastructure to deal with the layer three to four attacks and the seventh layer attack was analyzed and it was blocked so that none of the, you know, uh, airports or the hospitals secured by us were impacted. So this is a proof that an Indian cybersecurity vendor could beat even the international vendors when such critical issues happen and it can secure the infrastructure of the country within the country itself so that the data never flows out of the country and it remains intact and it can serve the purpose that it's even deployed for. So, and finally, they tried to even attack us, but we could securely mitigate that as well. So this is a real-time use case that I would like to showcase in front of you. And with that, I would like to conclude, uh, you know, so um, I'm pro part of Proface. So basically, Proface is also offering not just a web application firewall, but it's like a unified, unified web security platform offering a RASP, a WAF, a WAP, and also application security poster management. And not only that, does that happen, we also communicate with other tools in the security process so that it provides a 360-degree view or a 360-degree coverage 
you know, uh, involving all the security policies. So this is what we are trying to build a unified web security platform, and not just uh, independent DOS or BOD or you know, uh, all these kind of risk mitigation platforms standalone. So this is, and the future of ASPM basically revolves around automation involving AI and ML so that it can detect the threats and mitigate it effectively, integrating with the CI-CD pipeline. And nowadays, we all know that everything is getting containerized. So you also have to see that you know, your security tools are also kind of fitting into the cloud native platform. And also threat intelligence have to be, you know, you, have, you will have to depend with the global threat intelligence platform to keep yourself updated about what kind of threats are evolving and what kind of threats is, you will be facing in the near future. And another thing is the risk-based prioritization and the user-centric approaches because there are a lot of user-sensitive information being dealt within the fintech industry. And it's our duty and responsibility to keep that safe and intact so that none of the bad actors get to your data, financial data, and we, we secure the data of our country within the country itself. So thank you. With that note, I would like to conclude. And I'm happy to have got all your attention. And it's a real pleasure for me. Thank you.